my 8-pin auxiliary power plugged in, and I have my 24-pin plugged in. So I am ready now to turn on the power supply and see if we are going to get a smoke test of this motherboard. So let's look at the name of the players we've got here. I'm going to be installing a 10th generation Core i5. It's an i5-10400, which is a socket LGA-1200 CPU into this ASUS Prime B460 Plus motherboard. Now, this CPU came with the stock Intel heatsink, which is just enough for this processor. In fact, I would recommend you replace this heat sink with a better heat sink. I like to call this the clicky leg heat sink. I find it the hardest one to install and that's actually why I have my students do it because I want to make sure they're proficient not just with the easier heat sinks to install but the more difficult ones. So let's jump into this. The first thing I got to do to install this CPU is to remove the protective cover. Now do not ever store one of these motherboards without either the protective cover or a CPU in the socket because the pins of the socket are extremely fragile. So let's take a look at this. First thing I got to do is push down on the lever, pull it out, then I can come up and flip it up. And then in a somewhat in graceful way, I'm going to pop out this plastic cover from behind. Come on, baby. There we go. So the plastic cover's off. I need to carefully save this in case I'm going to store this motherboard in the future. Let me carefully put this away. Okay, got it. Now, to put my CPU in, the next thing you need to notice is on the top cover of the CPU socket, there is a triangle. And that triangle is going to show us which way the CPU needs to go in. Now, unfortunately, on this CPU, let me zoom in right here. The triangle in the corner right here is very small, but that is the proper orientation. So make sure you get those triangles right because I could conceivably, uh, I could conceivably try to put this in backwards and that would be a bad thing and you'd be wasting lots of your money. Let's put it back the right way and let me flip this cover up and then I just want to make sure I get the CPU aligned, wiggle it to make sure it's in. The cover comes down. I've got to pull the handle up so that the latching cover will come under this nub. And then I push down, pull out, and go under here. And now I have the CPU locked into position. And everybody in the world is now happy. All right, now we've got to get this heat sink ready for installation. So the first thing you want to make sure is that all four legs are in the up position. And the way you can tell that is if you look on the side, you will see that the two white legs right there are close together. If they are in the locked position here, let me push that in, you'll see how the black plunger has expanded the two white tabs. And that's what makes it stick inside the motherboard. If, if one of these legs is down, there is no way you're going to get that through the hole in the motherboard. So you need to make sure it's unlocked. Now, how do we make sure it's unlocked? And we need to make sure it's in the up position. So right now, this leg is in the locked position. And the way you can tell they're in the locked position is if you see this line right here for a flathead screwdriver, if it's pointing towards the middle of the heat sink, it's in the locked position. So for example, this one right here is unlocked and it is in the up position. I need to turn it to lock to have it prepared. Now this one that I extended, I need to unlock it, pull it up, and then turn it back to lock to have it ready to install. So now you'll see the legs are ready to install. The only other thing I've got to do is get this uh, power connector to the motherboard out of the storage position that it came with. There we go. So now we're ready to go in. Now, if you look at this, it's perfectly square, so it doesn't matter which way I install this on the motherboard. It's whichever way is going to work best for this CPU fan connector. So I'm going to get this oriented and plug it into the mother or motherboard. Oh, and by the way, the heat sink compound is pre-applied to this heat sink and there ain't much of it. So if you need to install heat sink compound because your, your heat sink did not come with it, a little dab will do you. 
uh, however much you think you need to put on, put about half of that. Two little dabs will spread out a lot. You can always add more later if you're concerned, but if you put too much on, you are going to make a royal mess. It's almost time to install the heatsink. A couple things, here's our CPU socket. You can see I kind of fitted it into place because I have transferred some of the heatsink compound onto the, the heat spreader on top of the CPU chip. Here's the four holes that each of those legs are gonna go into, and here is the CPU fan header right there. So now when I look at this, I can kind of go, I want it to be, yes, this will work really well. I know, you know, anal, anal retentive people, this is gonna drive you crazy because the Intel sticker is upside down. And I just have a little bit of advice for you. Get over it. Well, hang on, let me see how it will look if I do it this way. Because I'm not claiming I'm anal retentive, but, oh, this is not going to work well because that cord's going to be too far away. I'm going to have to, you know, quote unquote, put it on upside down. So I'm going to wiggle it around here, make sure each of the legs is in the hole, and then I'm going to kind of grab it here in the middle, push down very hard, click, 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 click. I'm going to go back around the horn, push on all of these again, Everything looks good. Now I can plug my fan head into the CPU fan as it's clearly marked. Now I am ready to put this motherboard into the computer. Actually, I'm not because I find it much easier to also go ahead and put the memory in the motherboard before you try to install the motherboard into the case. So let me pop the memory into the motherboard. And it's important that you put them in the correct memory slot so that you get dual channel and your motherboard manual should tell you which slots to put them in. So if I have two memory sticks, it's recommending I put them into DIMM A2 and DIMM B2, which is the two gray slots in the motherboard. The other thing, of course, to watch out for is to make sure you don't have the notch backwards. So this notch is clearly backwards. I'm gonna put it in the slots right here. The notch lines up, I'm gonna push down, make sure it's seated well, you gotta go all the way down. The other memory stick's gonna go the same direction. I'm gonna get it in the slots and install it. Make sure I got them all the way down. I am now ready to put this motherboard into the computer case. Here's another little tip when you're installing a motherboard. If your motherboard has M2 for solid state M2 hard drives, you're gonna get a little standoff and a little screw to secure that M2 in a little baggie. I recommend you go ahead and put these standoffs into the motherboard along with the screws so you can find them later when you need them. All right, so I just put the little screw into the standoff and now I'm gonna put the standoff into the motherboard at whichever location is handy so that I will not lose these later on. So a little bit of prep work before I can put the motherboard in the case, I need to put the IO shield in the case. Now this goes in from the inside, but you need to make sure you don't get the IO shield upside down. Now how do we do this? Of course, I have never ever made this mistake, but if I look right here, this is clearly the correct direction to put the IO shield. Let me get this camera situated again, and you can watch me struggle to get this installed from the inside out. Come on, get in there, lined up. All right, that corner's in. Ah, uh, two corners are in. Come on, come on, you can do it. Ah, uh, ah, uh, this corner is not wanting to, that's three. Can I get this one in? Ah, uh, I think it's already in. Okay, I think we're good. I've got the IO shield in place. After a massive struggle, the pain is real. The last thing before putting the motherboard in is I have to make sure that all of the mounting legs in the computer case are in the right place and line up with the holes on the motherboard and there's not a mounting leg anywhere where it should not be. 
let me get this done. That's almost impossible to do on camera. So I'm going to do this by holding the motherboard over the back plane of the case and making sure each one of these legs lines up. And if not, I'm going to unscrew them using a little socket head I have with my iFixit screwdriver set and move them to the proper location. All right, I've verified all my standoffs are in the proper place. And since I have a mismatch of standoffs that accept different screw thread sizes, I have also carefully gotten the proper screws for each one of these sets of standoffs. So when I put the motherboard in, it will have the right screw to screw into the standoff. Let me get the motherboard in. It's going to be kind of a tight squeeze here between the power supply and the side of the case. I've got the motherboard in. I'm going to wiggle it down here until I get kind of at an angle and get it through the I.O. shield and see that my screw holes are lining up. They are. If I step back here, a little bit of camera jerk, you can see that I've got my I.O. shield. Everything's come through the I.O. shields. I'm ready to put my screws in. Six screws and we have a motherboard secured. I'll do a time lapse. Motherboard's in. I've got the front panels hooked up. I've got the cheesy little speaker to beep at me. My memory's in. CPU's in. You saw that earlier. Plugged in my low-end video card. I have my 8-pin auxiliary power plugged in, and I have my 24-pin plugged in. So I am ready now to turn on the power supply and see if we are going to get a smoke test of this motherboard. Well, I see power lights on the LEDs along the edge. Let's hit the power button on the front panel of the computer. CPU fan spins up. I do see the power light. And we will look over here and see if we get a power on self test. We do. We're getting a post on the motherboard. I'm going to press delete, and we are in the BIOS. This is a successful smoke test of this motherboard and CPU installation and heatsink. So what do I want to look for when I first get into the BIOS? Well, doing this low school, low tech way, old school, just using my video camera, you can see I've got both memory sticks here. This is a touchscreen, and I have the USB plugged into the motherboard as well from the touchscreen. Most importantly, I can see my CPU temperature is very good. Now, as expected, it's creeping up a little bit, but it's not high by any means. And even if it ended up in the low 30s of centigrade, I would still be very happy. Another thing I can see is I do have my CPU fan plugged in correctly. Everything's looking good. It is seeing my uh, CPU properly. It's running at the right speed. I'm seeing my eight gigabytes of RAM. They're in the proper RAM slots. Everything looks good for this smoke test. So I have successfully built up this machine to the point where I can now hook up everything else, front panel USB, front panel audio, hard drive, old school DVD, and install an operating system. So we are good. Thanks for watching and do that thing that content creators ask you to do because it really does help out the channel. Take care.